There are human studies comparing the effects of eating glucose mm -hmm. versus eating fructose. Mm -hmm. Very different. Mm -hmm. And it's always been of interest to me that the Duke diet of just eating rice, how in the world could that work? Because all they're doing is eating glucose. If they're switching from eating sugars, so sucrose, to just glucose, it's dramatically better for your health. Yes. Say that again. <laughs> eating starch is dramatically better for your health than eating sugar. If you want to eat a snack, it's much better to eat a starchy snack than a sweet snack. And I try to explain to my readers that in starches, there's just glucose, but in sugars, there's glucose and fructose. And that makes it way worse for you. Way, 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 way worse for you. Now, unfortunately, today, and my work rests upon visualizations of our glucose levels. So I use glucose spikes to illustrate the hacks. We cannot easily visualize fructose spikes or insulin spikes. So glucose is incomplete. And if you were just focusing on your glucose levels, you might see that, for example, rice and a cupcake create the same glucose spike. And you might think, oh, they're the same for my body, but they are not because something sweet will have an invisible, if you want, a fructose spike as well, which is way worse for your body. Yeah. Than the glucose alone. Now, fructose is a great mitochondrial poison. Uh, <laughs> and just to get off track for a second, a number of years ago, great apes had a genetic mutation that they were no longer able to make urokinase that would break uric acid into a harmless substance. That was a wonderful thing for them because mm. they could take fructose and turn it into triglycerides mm. and uric acid. And it turns out they could outcompete as climate change came other monkeys that didn't have that defect. Fascinating. So they could gain weight in the summer by eating fruit and outcompete the other monkeys who couldn't gain weight by eating mm -hmm. fruit. We happen to carry that mutation. Yep. And I have to keep reminding people that in the good old days... It was great. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was fabulous. And we only had fruit in a very short time period. You know what else was great in the good old days? The fact that eating something sweet released dopamine in the brain. Yeah. That was great, right? Because it told you, oh, if it's sweet... Eat as much you, as you exactly. can. But today, yeah. it's a nightmare because you're being manipulated by all of these ultra-processed foods that are releasing dopamine into your brain, and it's really hard to control yourself. It's very addictive. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I was listening to a YouTube of Alessio Fasano, who you might know is a leaky gut researcher at Harvard. Uh, he's a GI gastroenterologist. Yeah. And he gives this lecture, and he says, when strawberries were only available <laughs> two months out of the year. What a concept. Yeah, and you look forward to it, <laughs> yeah. and you only got them for two months. He yeah. said, they have these things in January that are called strawberries. Yeah. And he said... They're actually gross. They don't even taste that good. No, yeah, and they're, they're just been, cold and watery. Yeah, yeah. And, and sugary. Folks, this is a really, really hard concept to grasp. Glucose, the stuff we eat as a starch, particularly a difficult to digest starch, is not the evil empire. Mm -hmm. But you're right, sugar, which is glucose and fructose, yeah. it is really mischievous. However, what I find is that glucose is a really helpful window through which to enter improving your food habits. And if you think about your glucose spikes, you're also naturally going to reduce your sugar intake because glucose and fructose go hand in hand, right? right? It's really difficult to find fructose on its own. So if you're focusing on, I want to reduce my glucose spikes, as a result, you're also going to reduce sugar. For example, my first and most important hack I teach people is to have a savory breakfast instead of a sweet one, Yeah. right? And that is removing the fructose from your first meal of the day, which is so helpful. All right, define a savory breakfast. <laughs> so it's Savory breakfast is a breakfast built around protein. Okay, so a good portion of protein. It can be animal protein. It can be plant protein. I love having dinner leftovers. So the leftover chicken or fish or whatever from the night before. You can have some starch in your breakfast for taste. So for example, you might have a little slice of sourdough bread, some potatoes, etc. But most importantly, nothing sweet in the morning, except if you really want some, some whole fruit. But again, for taste, right? What you want to avoid is a breakfast that is pure starch and sugar. For example, oats with honey and a banana. 
right? Right. Pure starch and sugars, glucose, fructose, big glucose spike. If you really love sweet taste in the morning, have, for example, an omelet and then have an apple, but a whole apple, because when you transform a piece of fruit, then a lot of problems start happening. So no fruit juices, no jams, no cereal, no muesli, no granola, etc. No acai bowls, no smoothies. But if you really want something sweet, a piece of whole fruit. I'm glad you brought up smoothies. Americans don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. And everybody knows that. The Center for Disease Control knows that. I was recently assailed on a podcast. How dare I tell people not to have a smoothie? Really? Oh, yeah. Because what a wonderful way to get, to your, get fruits your fruits in. in. Well, the problem is, okay, there's a couple things about fruit. First of all, people identify some fruit with something being natural they're like fruit is natural so it's good for you the fruit that we eat today is not natural oh thank you for saying that. yeah so the oranges we find today the bananas the strawberries they are completely different from the ancestral pieces of fruit we might find in the past so for example if you look at an ancestral banana it's very small it's full of seeds it's tart it's not sweet in the same way that humans bred gray wolves into chihuahuas <laughs> for fun right to create a breed that they enjoyed they have bred fruits and vegetables yep. through thousands of years of selective breeding and so today our bananas are the chihuahua equivalent to the ancestral gray wolf or the ancestral banana so that's the first thing to remember the fruit we find today is not natural however if you want to eat something sweet, a piece of whole fruit is still the best thing to choose because whole fruit contains fiber and water. So yes, there's fructose in there. Yes, there's glucose in there. But the fiber is going to slow down the impact of that on your blood. Now, the problem arises when you denature that piece of fruit. Bingo. Right? You smoothie it. You pulverize the fiber particles. You juice it. You remove the fiber entirely. You dry it to remove the water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you're just concentrating the sugar molecules. And it doesn't matter if those sugar molecules came from an orange and are in an orange juice, or if they came from a beetroot and are in a can of Coca-Cola. To your body, it's the same molecules. So we have to be super careful and keep repeating this message. You hear that, folks? Yeah. You're right. One of my favorite expressions is eat whole foods, yeah. but eat them whole. There's no smoothie machines in the San Diego Zoo. There's <laughs> yeah. no juicers no. in they eat things whole. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Our fruit, it doesn't even resemble anything it's anymore. a human invention yeah. it's a creation yeah. and actually oranges didn't even exist in that's nature. right they have been just made up it's amazing yeah i actually I used to live in a community nearby here redlands california yeah. next to loma linda and redlands invented the navel orange mm. yeah and that's literally it was Across, and I thought they were invented in China. Oranges, maybe a different breed. Yeah, a different breed. Oh, but cool. The navel orange are fascinating. Yeah, it was invented in Redlands, California. Fascinating. There you go. And so, and you're right. It was an invention. It was yeah. a hybridized totally. for sugar content. Exactly. And now we have Cara Cara oranges, which are mm. just pure sugar. Yeah. And of course. We were designed to seek out sweet taste. The I mean, dopamine. what, 60% of our taste buds are sweet receptors. Yeah. And people often confuse, you know that feeling when you get when you eat something sweet, sort of rush? It can be confused for energy. You yeah. might think that's energy. It's not energy, it's dopamine, right? It's the pleasure molecule. And that's also quite difficult to understand. When you eat sweet foods in the morning, you're not getting energy. You're getting dopamine, but your mitochondria are suffering within. All right. Now, another thing that you talk about, which is very important, is when we eat sugar or even glucose or even protein, we squirt out a hormone called insulin. Yeah. Let's talk about insulin and let's talk about insulin resistance. Why is that kind of the one two punch of mm. this? Well, first of all, insulin tends to get a bad rep but it's actually vital, right? People who Absolutely. don't have the ability to produce it, if they don't inject it, they will die. So when your body experiences a glucose spike, there are a few processes that take place that are not very good for you. So mitochondrial damage, glycation, inflammation, etc. So your body knows that if there's a big glucose spike happening, it should try to get that glucose level down. And so what it does is that your brain calls your pancreas and is like, yo, we got a big glucose spike. Can you grab this extra glucose and store it away? And so your pancreas sends out insulin. 
fantastic hormone. And insulin grabs extra glucose and stores it away in your liver, in your muscles, in your fat cells. Okay? And that's fantastic because it gets that glucose level down. Now, the problem is that over time, as your body produces more and more insulin to deal with more and more glucose spikes, you become resistant to it. It's a little bit like the first time you drink a cup of coffee in your life, you are awake for 48 hours. That <laughs> stuff is strong. You're like, whoa. And then three months later, all of a sudden, you're drinking 10 coffees a day just to stay awake because you've become habituated to it. Your body has become resistant to the caffeine. In the same way, you can become resistant to the insulin, right? And that's a problem because when insulin levels rise too much and you're too insulin resistant, it can no longer do its job of grabbing the extra glucose and storing it away. So then your glucose levels start to rise dangerously. And that's what's called type 2 diabetes or prediabetes but actually it's it's a spectrum right it's insulin resistance spectrum from normal metabolically healthy to all the way to type 2 diabetes and that's really something we want to try to reverse insulin resistance all right so what are the hacks okay to do that in my second book in the method here i focus on four most important ones so the first one is a savory breakfast we've covered it the second one might sound a little bit strange it's vinegar so a tablespoon of vinegar in a big glass of water before one of your meals a day. Do you know what molecule is in vinegar that has this effect on glucose levels or no? Well, I'm a big fan of vinegars <laughs> and I love acetic acid. Exactly. And so acetic acid slows down the breakdown of starches in your stomach. And as a result, when you have this vinegar drink before a meal, it can cut the glucose spike of the meal by up to 30%. So week two of the method, I introduce vinegar into your days once a week, uh, once a day, sorry. Week three, the hack is called the veggie starter hack. That means once a day before a meal, begin the meal with a plate of vegetables. Why? Because vegetables contain fiber. And when we have fiber at the beginning of a meal, it's going to slow down gastric emptying. And so just slow down the speed at which any glucose molecules will arrive into your bloodstream. And then final hack of the glucose goddess method is after one of your meals a day, use your muscles for 10 minutes. Thanks for watching, but don't go anywhere. The next episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast is waiting for you now. Now there is a fruit that you can eat year round, and that's an avocado. An avocado is actually a single seeded berry. And the good news about an avocado is that it's mostly monounsaturated fat and fiber.